Well, welcome and good morning. I invite you to pray an opening prayer with me. Gracious God, we come before you today to worship, to praise your name. We also come bringing our burdens, bringing those things that weigh on our heart, that we may leave them, that we may go away fed in your spirit and your sustaining love so that we may be of service in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, well, I invite you to please stand and join me in the order of confession and forgiveness. It's found in your bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Please take a moment of reflection. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses, and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us and while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. from Isaiah, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. So you 
from Romans. There is therefore now no, no, <clears throat> no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by flesh, could not do. And to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But since you not, are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, though his spirit, through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them, other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not underst understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. And as for what was sown on rocky ground... This is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the person immediately falls away. And for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands, the, understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a message. Good morning. 
So a question. So if you were um, getting ready for uh, to play a big game somewhere or something, do you think eating cookies before you went to go play would be good good food to eat before you? And probably not. Yeah. What What do you think would be a good food to eat before you go play a big game? Healthy foods like what? Apples. Yep, that'd be a good one. Um, some carrots, maybe a sandwich. Yeah, something to to give you some good energy that'll last, and you can you can uh, play your game. Yeah, cookies that'll give you quick energy. You'll be all wild for a little bit, and then you'll get really tired out. Well, why I talk about food is because in the gospel story today, where Jesus talks about seeds being planted in different soils. He's talking about plant food. And each of those soils have, are kind of like cookies or candy or soil that's full of good vegetables and fruits and good for you. And he's, so he's talking about how, where the plants were growing, help them grow or not grow. And that it's that way with our faith as well. And there's things that can help our faith be like the good food, like the, that gives you energy, like the, the carrots and the, and the sandwiches and the um, apples. And that's things like prayer or reading a Bible story with your family and maybe talking about it. Um, worshiping with friends. Those are all ways that give us good energy or faith, as it's called in our, in our beliefs with God. And so that's the basic lesson for today, is to um, plant in good, good food soil. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus, who teaches us how to better know and trust you. Amen. Thanks for coming out. Have a seat. Well, for a while now, we've been on a sermon series uh, looking at Romans uh, each week. The second lesson is from Romans from now until September. Today, I'm going to actually touch on all three of the readings because they all kind of had a common theme, and you will see that, uh, that being good news. The prophet in Isaiah 55 had a task, and his task was to paint a vision of a world as it ought to be so that it could transform the audience that he was speaking to. And in transforming the world, the way they saw the world, uh, that he would give that audience inspiration, hope, which was a pretty big task considering his audience. They were a bunch of people who were feeling defeated, very defeated. They were returning from Babylonian exile. They were traumatized. They'd lived too long to have seen so much pain, and it was too much to bear for anyone. They had witnessed the destruction of their beloved city by an empire known for its scorched earth policy. That means it wiped out everything when it would take over a city or a country, and all that was left was scorched earth. 
So it's no surprise that may, they, they were questioning belief in following the God of their ancestors. So the prophet is presented with this great task to speak words of hope to the hopeless and transform how they saw the world as it was, but for what it could be. So what does he talk about? He talks about rain and snow. And being a Midwesterner, I would not call that inspiring topics to talk about. Rain and snow. But they're not Midwesterners. The audience comes from a very arid country where rain and snow are needed. They are necessary. They are blessings because they mean survival. And so the prophet says that God provides, just as the rain and snow abundantly, that God is with God's people, that even in exile, even when they feel alone and abandoned, and he's speaking of this abundant, provisional God who rains down on them with God's word. And out of that, I, I think it's interesting, I just noticed it this morning, where it said, out of the thorns, and out of the deadness would come myrtle and cypress. I love essential oils. Myrtle and cypress are very strong oils of healing. So out of death comes healing. It's a whole other dimension I never even noticed till this morning when it was read. The prophet Jesus and Paul share a very coherent message. God's love and grace is raining down on us. That's basically what all three readings this morning is trying to say. God's love and grace is raining down on us. Paul shares a word of hope. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that's crazy good news. It's crazy because it's saying now there is no condemnation. No condemnation. Not when I get my act together. Not when uh, I figure out the rules. But now there is no condemnation. Oh, there's got to be a hook to that. There's got to be something with that. That can't be true. But like the prophet who has this vision for what the world ought to be in order to transform the world now by living into that vision, by being motivated to live into that vision, you would transform the world you're in now. Paul is telling us that God loves us, forgives us, restores us, welcomes us with no judgment now. And that is really crazy. Good news. And for all the times that we've heard those words, these words, forgiveness, repair, many of us walk through life wounded, stuck, somewhere between grace and destruction, sort of in this limbo. Because we cannot let go of this pervasive sense that we're not worthy. Or there, there's got to be a hook to this. There's got to be some, something that will get me just at that moment when I receive the grace and then bam, I won't. It's as though, as Thoreau once observed, he said, most people lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. Again and again we hear this message, hope for hopelessness, abundant grace, no matter who we are, what we've done. This description of a God who wants us to live full, abundant, loud singing lives 
filled with meaning and purpose and grace and gratitude, and we struggle to hear it and to believe it. And in turn, our song goes unsung. So I think that's why the story from the Gospel of Matthew can be, actually it can be a difficult one to hear. Because we wonder, what kind of soil am I? And if we're going through tough times, if we have doubts and hopelessness, if we're challenged by demands of time and money and health and survival, well, it can feel like this is a condemning story, right? This is the hook. See, I told you there'd be a hook, right? Right? <gasps> this is it. One in four chances. One in four chances of Great, that's great. Hope for the hope, right? One in four. I knew it. I knew it. There was something. Right? And we hook into that, and we condemn ourselves. Or we condemn others. Look at them. But the parable of the sower, it isn't about the four types of soil. That's not what that parable is about. It's about the sower, the parable of the sower. It's about the sower. And the sower plants seeds everywhere. Grace rains down, no matter who you are, what you've done, where you are, if you're ready for it or not, grace rains down on you. The word of God rains down on you. No picking and choosing. The sower does not just sow in the good soil. The sower sows in all the soil. And that is how the word experienced through Jesus, through unconditional love, is given to us. We receive it, or we don't receive it, but either way, it is rained down on us. And the soil, those are the conditions in our lives. And we all go through different conditions in our lives. We all live in the soils, the different soils. We have met our share of birds, which are our hardships and troubles, and they can snatch our faith away. We endure rocks and lack root when we face oppression. We live with thorns, with the cares of the world, like unemployment and bad weather destroying crops and health crises that choke us with worry and fear. And just as the soils are interconnected experiences of life conditions, conditions that we're all exposed to at some point, we all are living in the four soils at some point. So it is for a community. Interconnectedness in life is deeper and more powerful than we'd usually like to believe. Truth is, none of us are truly independent operators. What I do affects you. What you do affects her. What her, she does affects him. We're all interconnected. And so that's why when in a community, when an event occurs, like the retirement of a long-tenured pastor, we each have our own reactions to the event. And it's part of an ongoing process. Because what happens is we make adjustments. We always look for balance. That's the way human beings are designed. We will always seek balance. So when we experience a loss or a large change, then our balance, our equilibrium, is knocked out. And we do what we can to bring it back to balance. It's a pretty amazing thing about human nature. And the church is a living organism. And it can experience fear and anxieties. 
and it can run through when a transition takes place, good or bad, just like it occurs in us as individuals and in our families. So important during those times then to recognize and name the presence, one, of anxiety, which is that feeling of uh, wanting to flee, wanting to fight, wanting to freeze, wanting to faint, wanting to just numb out. But though that is what, when I say anxiety, that's what it means. When you have those reactions, which are normal, it's what happens when there's a change. It's important to identify that in yourself and in a group, and then acknowledge the presence of God's nature. The prophet, Jesus, and Paul each speak about God's nature. And the nature of God is abundant. It's wild. It shows no caution, no judgment, no discouragement. It's willing to keep reaching in that bag of seeds for all eternity to cover all creation with grace like rain falling down on us. I find when I am discouraged, when I'm anxious, when I'm getting that feeling of, man, I just want to flee, fight, freeze, or faint, I say, my life is in God's hands, and they're good hands. Sometimes I've got to focus in on those good hands, of feeling safe and secure in them. Because sometimes there are times when I desperately need to know that God is good, right? Because there's so many bad things happening and all these changes, and they're disturbing my equilibrium and my sense of stability, and I need to know that they don't change God's nature, a nature for abundant goodness and grace, that that is steadfast no matter what happens. So I say, my life is in God's hands, and they are good hands. And I believe by putting my life, our lives, in God's care, it's putting our lives in the hands of goodness and graciousness and mercy. To surrender to such hope transforms life as we see it now into the vision of what life ought to be, what it can be, what is truly the vision of God. It's like grace falling down, grace falling down on me, a rain of grace. So I said this last week, I'll, I'll reiterate the invitation. I'm here to listen. Please call the uh, office and uh, make an appointment and go for coffee or tea. I'm trying to get in shape. Let's go for a walk. I'd love to talk and hear your stories. Tell me the story of Messiah. Tell me, are you anxious about the future? Are you frustrated by the past? Are you impatient with the present process? Let's just release that debris. Get it out. Air it out. So that in this interim season, we can free ourselves and open ourselves to the future God dreams of for Messiah Lutheran and its presence here and impact upon the Springfield community. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. Gracious God, we give thanks for your living word that goes out and does not return empty. Make your church a partner in accomplishing what you desire. Unite us in faith, witness, and mission. Hear us, O God. For land, creatures, and people suffering from drought, that gentle rains bring life and hope. For mountains, hills, and the trees of the field, that all creation clap for joy. Hear us, O God. For nations suffering the violence and hunger of war. For exiles and refugees, lead them home in peace and bless them with your fullness. Hear us, O God. For victims and perpetrators of race-based crime, for all who suffer sorrow, illness, or injury, especially Al Fellows and Jan Schnath, bring them justice, healing, and new life by the power of your spirit. Hear us, O God. For this congregation and its leaders, through our shared work, let your word prosper among us and bring life to the community beyond our doors. Hear us, O God. In thanksgiving for all who have died recently, for strangers and dear ones who have blessed our lives and sparked our hope, for the families of Jeannie Burnell Graves, the Van Camp family, and Nellie Seward, mother of David Seward. Give comfort and confidence to all who mourn. Hear us, O God. Great. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Merciful God, you open wide your hand. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into a path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we will proclaim Christ's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. So remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. And let us pray, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This meal is prepared, and all are welcome who believe in this meal of forgiveness to receive it. The ushers will let you know when to come forward. You may kneel or stand along the railing. You'll receive the bread. There are gluten-free elements. If you would like that, just tell the server. 
You'll receive the bread, and then you will receive either the red liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. Come, let us eat.
please stand and receive the post-communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Announcements are found in the messenger, which was an insert in your bulletin. Uh, but one thing to note, uh, today at 9.45, following worship, uh, we have a presentation on Safe to Sleep, presented by Ramona Baker from the Churchill of Churches of Council of Churches. There we go, Council of Churches. And um, to encourage you to go listen to that. Um, and learn about how we can help homeless women, many of whom are elderly and um, are, uh, this is a very interesting program that uh, Messiah could be part of. Today, from 2 to 4, is a fun event for youth at Nadine Melgren's home, uh, a pool party, so please note that. And uh, coming up soon, there's an ice cream social at uh, Faith Lutheran Church. We're all invited to um, a little uh, sharing in the Lutheran community here in Springfield. So, uh, The rest of your announcements are pretty much found here. We welcome back our campers, and you have one. that, I invite you to please stand and receive the benediction. And now may the power of God strengthen you, may the love of Jesus Christ heal you, and may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you, now and forever. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all. Go in peace, serve the Lord.